Hey, it's your man Marcus Whitney, and this is the Creative Power Hour. Welcome back. And today, the superhero sitting next to me is Mighty Megan Barry. Welcome to the show, and uh, I'm so excited to have uh, our third guest, Megan Barry, here. Um, and Megan, I gave you a little bit of a superhero name, so that was on the fly. Sorry for surprising you with that. Um, but uh, but I do believe that we all have a little bit of um, superhero inside of us, and that's that sort of you know the, that's the corny theme that goes along with creative power. Um, so. So I, I'm always interested in hearing people's origin stories, um, just because I think there's always something in there that that links to to who they are today. So do you mind sharing a little bit about you know how you got here? Sure. So I uh, born in California, I, uh, grew up in Kansas, middle class life. Went on to college and uh, came to Nashville to get my MBA uh, from okay. Vanderbilt and stayed. So I was going to do the 18 months and then here I am. But I think so much of of my life was shaped by the fact that I had family that was really committed uh, to, to service. And I think back now, you know, my dad, my grandfather was on the school board and okay. a small business person. Okay. My dad was in the Marines. Okay. And so this kind of wow. ethos of, of service. Uh, my mom was a stay at home mom. And so like there was all this uh, as part of the background that then led to uh, caring deeply about the community I lived in. Mm. So, so you got, you got your MBA. So, yeah. so, you were in the business world, right? Yeah, yeah. I spent twenty plus years in, in business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I'm always struck by. I, I mean, I'm I'm a business person, uh, but I also care about the community. I talk to lots of people who also are business people who care right. a lot about the community, and you know, occasionally it'll come up the idea of, of running for office, right? And I think we're, we're all really pragmatic people, and we think about like how hard that would be, and we're just <laughs> like, uh, yeah, I think there's other ways that I can serve, but. You know, you had 20 years of, of business experience, and yet still seems like something maybe in, in your past and that commitment to service, you know, did pull you in that direction to to become a public, a public servant. But, and I think you're exactly right. It's funny, you know, women especially don't uh, tend to step up and, and want to run for office. But thankfully, we, we just saw this wave in November where we had a lot of new women uh, decide that they did. Young women, too, which was Incredible. really exciting. Incredible, yeah. Uh, but, you know, there's there. I saw this USA poll one time that said that if you go out and ask men and women, have you ever thought about running for office? Men, I think there's like 40% said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And when right. asked the next question, like, do you think you're qualified? They're all like, absolutely, no problem. <laughs> and then women, when asked, and this is a while ago, said only 8% said that they would ever consider running for wow. office. And when asked the follow-up question about why, yeah. they okay. said, I'm not qualified. Wow. And so I think that as we, we talk about what does it take to be a public servant? You know, for me, I got involved in my neighborhood association and I got yeah. involved in my PTO and then I ran for Metro Council. But it never was this thought about running for public office. Uh, and so, I, but I, my journey's I, not into typical, I, I, I don't think. So, can, can we just take a quick segue? I have sure, a question about sure, sure. this because um, I don't have daughters. I have two boys. Um, and so, uh, I, don't, I don't fully understand that. Because my my mother was yeah. like she was one of these boss ladies, right? Yeah. And so like because that was the image of a woman that I had growing up, I like I I, I have continued to be surprised as I've gotten older and, and um have had to accept and realize that there is this this sort of um difference in in sense of self qualification, right. self readiness for things because because my mother just didn't so like has, sure. help me like unpack that a little bit for me just be, just because like I'm I'm ignorant or I just didn't I just didn't experience it growing up well I mean I think that uh, you know uh, you can look at politics you can look at other fields where women aren't represented right. in the echelons of power right uh, and I think that's because for a long time we, we've always thought of women as having to be demure or um, if they are exercising a authority mm -hmm. or being assertive or they're powerful, mm -hmm. somehow that makes us uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. think you see that bleed into not just politics, mm -hmm. uh, but also into the, the highest uh, uh, CEOs in the right. land. I mean, I, I, what did I the, see the, the other I mean, day? the numbers are clear. Right? There are more men named John who are CEOs than there are women Period. CEOs. Period. Wow. Yeah. So I mean, wow. and that should tell you something. Yeah, yeah. But that didn't 
stop you in any way. Well, I, mean, I don't you think got it, to check those. You, you checked all those boxes. Well, I mean, right? I, I, I too grew up in a family where my mom was very much about you can do anything, right. and, and and I always believed I could. Uh, having said that, she also was also very clear that my sisters have three little sisters. Uh, we should all choose a profession that would help. That would how did she use for this? We could stay home with the kids, and mm -hmm. uh, um, and so I actually have an undergraduate degree in elementary education. Mm -hmm. My sister below me is a special ed teacher. My sister below her is a nurse. So you all my took sister below heart. is a nurse, right? I mean, so we all chose very traditional female uh, roles mm -hmm. in, in getting our, our our undergraduate degrees. So you ran for mayor um, after the era of Obama, which really changed yeah, yeah. The, the game, right? I mean, the game has since been changed again by President Trump, but, but the Obama campaign really changed the game. And your campaign um, was, a, was an incredibly strong one online. Really, yeah, yeah, we, yeah, really, we, really we, strong absolutely. online campaign, right. and like that sort of carried through even today. Like your online brand, right, is you know really, really strong. Um, tell us a little bit about like the ramp up to that, right? Because sure. you weren't always there, and right. and like you know we we both grew up in an era where we had a rotary phone in our house, right? You know what oh, I mean? Gosh, like, like, like we grew up before the internet, right? Yeah. So like, how, how is it for right. you to now be someone who fully leverages and fully understands that we're in this internet era and this is sort of the way that we communicate? You do it so well yeah, thanks. now as if you were native to it, but like talk about that that transition. Sure. Uh, well, well, when we, uh, and we did take a lot of pages out of Obama's campaign mm -hmm. and uh, this idea of how do you connect to folks who are traditionally not part of the community. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I spent a lot of time on Metro Council and I would go and we would have these community meetings and, you know, bless, it would always be the same 10 people who would show up mm -hmm. who were absolutely committed, but you knew there were 90 other people who didn't either have the time or, you know, just couldn't get there. So uh, how, how are we going to find other ways to reach them? Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of the things that we did, and again, it sounds, it was so revolutionary then, but it's like it's not now where we would actually do these town halls on the phone, right? So if, okay, I, was at, okay. if I was at my kitchen table, I didn't have to drive over to the and, community and just, center. just for context, sure. this is when you were a council Yeah, this is when, when, okay. I, yeah, this is when okay. we were doing council. So, you know, we would do these town halls. You could call in. You could find out what was going on. Uh, and, and, I, and that was just like the, the beginning right. of trying to right. find different ways to connect. Right. Because that's what it was really about. Yeah. How do you connect uh, more effectively with the audience that you want? To talk to mm -hmm. um, and so yeah and then of course you have you know it all evolved Instagram yeah, and, yeah, 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 and yeah. the social media concept yeah uh, I can remember when we went up on Twitter and Instagram and uh, oh gosh what's the other one that my my little um that goes away oh Snapchat Snapchat yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Snapchat, yeah, yeah. Right, Snapchat. Right, right, right. you know that's mostly really for my nieces and nephews yeah uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I get a lot of Snapchats from that yeah um, but you know it's it's funny how that has all evolved and there will be something that's going to come next. Yeah. Uh, and I think just being able to be somebody in, either in uh, a service role or a, a company role, making sure that you're on top of that technology yep. so that you can continue to have those conversations in a meaningful way with the people that you want to reach. Yep. Yep. So, so I see today you're, you're doing speaking, you know, oh, yeah, I am. Uh, yeah. you know, sort of on a variety of different uh, platforms. Uh, there was a TEDx Nashville yep. women's event, um, which all the feedback that I heard from it was that oh, it was thanks. it was a fantastic event and that thanks. you were great. Um, and I think recently you were out in San Francisco at an event. Did, and, yep. you know, mm -hmm. we, we had talked before you were down in Texas maybe. For, um, I bet. Well, I was coming back from Texas, but I went out there. There's a a, a new media company, and I went out there and yeah, did their right. corporate retreat. Yep. Uh, where we were talking about having your worst day, mm -hmm. um, uh -huh. and uh, the fact, and, and looking at it through the lens of being an entrepreneur. Yeah. This is a company that's five years old, so uh, you know, how do you get up every morning if you're an entrepreneur or, or whatever your circumstances right. are, and, and keep facing uh, obstacles and, and powering through? It was great. Are Are you finding that this this process? I mean, this is this is something we were talking about a little bit over lunch, and and uh, it's it's definitely been true for me. Like as I, you know, powered through and got through the draft of the book, or as, congratulations, thank you, by the way. thank so you, cool. yeah, no, it it feels good to be done. Uh, you know, <laughs> like as I did that, or as I you know do this show and start to have conversations, yep. like I'm I'm getting like it's like I'm getting my story clear with myself, sure, right, which is. Which is self 
gratifying, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like, like I know I've got a story and I know I've got a set of beliefs, but like, it's not that clear, right? You know what I mean? I think sure. until you like have to like present it to somebody, yeah. you go through this process, right? So, so it, are, are you finding out things that you, you might've thought you believed and now you're like, wow, I really believe this, you know, as, as you're going through this, this like speaking. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, to your point, cause I think, I think that process, one of the, the things that I've listened to you talk about, which has been really impactful is this idea about actually taking the time to do it. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we ever do. Right. So the, the realizations, the actualization that comes from actually being reflected and, and I've had the gift of reflection over the last, uh, nine months yeah. and so uh and I, I never had that before because like most people you're full on and you're just like to going the to the thing, next to thing the next thing. thing and and uh I've been given that gift yeah. to say all right what's wh what comes next and, and you actually have to reflect on that so uh in in sort of a response to you saying that that the taking the time was profound so I I have uh every day since you you told me the story about having your worst day. Um, I've thought about that every day, wow. every day. Um, just because, you know, I just think perspective is, is so important, right? You know what I mean? Because yeah. like my, my little personal saying for myself that like helps me get out of, uh, mind funks is mood follows action, yeah. which, which it basically does. right is like, oh my goodness. you know, if You're I don't right. feel good, I have to do something to stop feeling bad, right? You know what I mean? Like, I, agree. I, I I can't just like wait for the good feeling to come. Right. That's just because it's just never gonna come, right? So, um, so like when you when you said that, I just felt like it moved the marker for me so oh, far wow. on like on like what I will let myself. Uh, it's not even complain is not even the right word, mm -hmm. right? It's it's like what will I let myself get down about, right? You know what I mean? And like, it just moved the marker on that because, you know, worst day is like a final thing. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like a, that's it. Right. That's, that's it. That's it. That's it. And so, and it just changed the way that I, I thought about you. You know what I mean? Yeah. As a, as a, as a, just as a human. And, 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 every day waking up and walking, and, and, you know what I mean? Like every day. Like, right. Like you, you're past that. Yeah, and Marcus, I think it's helpful because I know that some folks who might be watching might yeah. wonder what is your worst day. Yeah. And and and, and I'm, so for a minute, let me just say it wasn't the day that I had to tell my husband that I'd had an affair. It wasn't the day that I had to resign. It wasn't the day that I pled guilty to a felony. Um, it was the day that my son died, and and that was my worst day. Um, all those were really bad days. Don't get me wrong, but when you have your worst day it actually puts it all in perspective. Mm -hmm. And and I'd already had that day before all the rest of that happened. So uh, the stuff that came later wasn't, you know, was bad, but it wasn't, it wasn't my worst day. Yeah. I, I, I remember when, when, uh, when we got together uh, for that glass of wine and I, yeah. and I just remember thinking like, wow, you look really strong. You know what I mean? Like, like, you know, people emanate things, right? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I just like, wow, for someone who has been through what you've been through, you look really strong. You know Thanks. what I mean? It was, it was, it was admirable. It was, it was like, that's a, like, it was exciting for me. You know Thanks, what I'm saying? Marcus. It I was exciting. That. And it was like, it was like, I want to, I want, those are the kind of people I want to be around quite frankly. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to be around people who, um, can, can be their own judge. Right. You know what I mean? Sure, absolutely. Because people don't know what's going on in our lives. Right. right. You know what I'm that's saying? That's right. Uh, seriously. They like, don't. They don't know right. what's going on in our lives. And like, you know the 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 bad side of 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 the internet can be, um, you know uh, I don't know you know I know you know, Dwight, Trust me, you, know, I know. you know Johnny Twitter seventy seven who you know yeah. likes I, to make uh, you know his entire life about you know Twitter hashtags just being a troll sure. like, for life right sure. and um, and look I haven't I haven't had to deal with that a whole lot you know in my life but like. Um, but it doesn't mean I won't. Sure, it, of course it doesn't will. mean I won't. Right. right? You know of course, what I'm saying? And, yeah, absolutely. And, and so, yeah, I, like, I don't know. I just feel like, um, you know, this is just so much hypocrisy. It, it, you know what I mean? Like, it's there just is. a, there's just well, a lot and, of and, But I think to your point, I mean, you, you said something really powerful a, a moment ago, which is you decide with your mood how the rest of your day is going to go. Yeah. And so, you know, there's been some, I, I got to have the benefit of, the year end 
recap. Yeah. Um, so, um, and, and somebody said to me the other day, well, did you read it? I said, I didn't read it. Why, right. do, I, why, why, do, why do I recap? need to read it? And, and so I think you can do things to put yourself in a mood or not. And, and I was, I was walking through the airport the other day mm-hmm. and this lovely young woman stopped me and she said, I just want to say hi. And, and she said, and I can tell you're going to be fine by the way you're walking. She said, you're walking strong. Your head is up like, you know, and yeah. you've got a smile on your face. And, yeah. and, and, and I think when you greet the day with, with that already, that already makes a huge difference. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, sure. There are sad days too. I mean, don't get me wrong. Oh, of course. Of course. But, but, uh, but there's so much good that is out there that we get to, uh, you know, we live in this great city. Yeah. We have great people who live here. Right. Um, who want to do great things. I mean, right. you know, we, we got a lot going on. We do. This is an amazing place and, and an amazing time, right? Yeah. Oh you know my gosh. I mean? Yes. Yes. And an amazing time. How, um, well, you know, I knew, I knew we were going to go deep, but like, <laughs> so, so how, um, you know, we, we were talking about the various topics. One of the things I, I just, I just pushed out a new website and I think the thing I'm most happy about with it is I've got this section on there that, that it's, it's called passion. Right. Okay. And like over the years, like when I, when I, um, I was first known in Nashville as a tech guy yep. and there's a lot of people who still know me. Uh, as absolutely. A think guy, that, right? Yeah. Think that that's who you, you know, are. Yep. Um, there are people who now only know me as a healthcare Kind sure. Of, okay. Right? Like, sure. That's that's like the lens they got to see yep. me through, through. There are people in town who only know me as a soccer guy. Right. right? Sure. And sort of the point is, duh, I'm all those things. Like, of course. Like I am not a one dimensional like robot. Right. I have lots of interests. Right. I have lots of things I'm passionate about. Right. You know what I'm saying? People yeah. are gonna start learning about my passion for martial arts. Yeah. Like, which is- I, I, so I awesome. super love martial arts, yep. like, you know, and I'm going to start talking about that a lot more. So, so I, I put all these things out on their front and center right? and, you know, I don't intend to like compartmentalize my life. Sure. Right. For, so, so here, here's, here's my, my question for you, right? Um, you have, uh, you know, you, 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 you rose to, to to an incredible height being, you know, the, the, the you were the eighth mayor uh, of the, of, of Metro, seventh, seventh or eighth? The seventh. seventh. Okay. Seventh. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So you, you were seventh. I, I don't remember that. I don't know. Right. I was one you, of them. You were under the 10, right? You yeah. Yeah. Totally. So, so, absolutely. So you yeah. Definitely under first, 10. One of the first 10 mayors of, yeah. of Metro, yep. right? Nashville. Uh, and the first woman yep. to do mm-hmm. it. Um, and all the other things that, that you accomplished. And, you know, as we, just talked about you've had that worst day, right? Sure. So, so these things, you know, right now I, I feel like a lot of people when I, when your name comes up, they'll they'll now sort of associate you with um, the opioid crisis, sure. right? You yep. know, um, you know what? How do you feel about your purpose today mm-hmm. and your passions? Like, sure. you know, because I think women in leadership is clearly something yep. that, you know, like if I follow you on Twitter, like I, I notice the things that you, that you tweet or retweet sure. or who you're following. And like, you know, this, this, this whole rise of women in leadership yeah, is a big deal for you. It right? is. It's Absolutely. a big deal. It is. Right? Uh, in fact, I'm going to teach a class at Fisk this semester on women in leadership, which I'm That's really amazing. excited about. That's um, amazing. Um, and so I, you know, I think, the, the compartmentalization piece is really interesting to me and this idea that uh, being a first, right? So, because there's so many things, you know, I, you know, yes, I was the first woman mayor. Yes, I was the first mayor to ever resign. Yes, I was the first mayor to, to do X, Y, and Z. And so, you know, and that's, but I'm not the mayor anymore, right? So that piece is yeah, done. Yeah, yeah, right. That's done. Right. So, uh, and before I was the mayor, I was all these other things. So how do you... How do we, you take all that and integrate it mm-hmm. uh, into the person that you are now and how you're moving forward? And I and I don't think I don't think my passions have changed um, from you know from all the way along. I mean, there may be somebody who will roll their eyes at the, at the irony of this of what I'm going to say, but uh, you know, when I got my MBA and I went into corporate America. I went in and was an ethics and compliance officer for years yeah. and uh, because I really cared deeply about fairness and equity and how you translate that in the workplace. Uh, and somebody said to me the other day, do you think you'll go back and be an ethics and compliance officer? I said, I don't think that's going to be it. Anymore. Um, but, but those passions haven't changed. Right. And those passions were still were, were part of 
you know, going in and, and seeking the mayor's oh, office right. and trying to trying to move the needle on those pieces. Um, so I still see that as who I am. And now opioids is definitely something I care about, but mm -hmm. it's not the only thing I care about. Yeah. So it's about how do I move on a lot of different pieces. Right, right. Um, Well-being. Yeah. Um, so one of the things that, uh, that came up for me, like in the last... Uh, like four or five months, right? Mm -hmm. Was I, so I've, I've been, I've been in this healthcare space for the last four or five years. Um, and when I got into it, I really didn't understand much about it at all. So sure. the more that I got into it, the more that I got to understand the healthcare industry that we, uh, have today, um, fee for service for anyone who doesn't understand that's basically right. you go in, you get some procedure done and then the the hospital or the doctor's clinic or whatever, the surgeon, they get paid for that particular service, right? So, um, right. so fee for service is basically how everything happens in healthcare. Um, and that one thing, that one economic fact, uh, means that there are large parts of, um, health care, right. And health that cannot be, cannot be addressed right. in, in that, well, in that model. Right. So, so that, that sort of led to, um, you know, me digging pretty deeply into behavioral health. Right. And that's, and that then led me to be, start to get kind of self-reflective, right? And like, sure. say, hmm, this behavior that I have right. feels a little self-sabotaging, right? So, sure. so, so like, I don't know where this is going to go for me, but like, I haven't, you know, I haven't been drinking lately, right? You know yep. what I mean? Because I just, I just felt like I would, I was, um, like I was self-medicating trauma that was unaddressed and okay. I needed to sort of like, sure. you know, deal with that. And, you know, the, the thing is... I'm, I'm, by the way, I'm looking at your liquor cabinet. Can you just keep talking? You no, know, it's, 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 yeah, it's, it's well stocked and I got some over there <laughs> and... Right, exactly. Like, trust me, I can throw a party. Um, but, uh, but you know, like... Let me make sure I'm, I'm getting to the point here. Uh, I, I had never really thought about... Compounded trauma, yeah, especially for high-performing people, sure, right, um, and then the correlation between uh, self-sabotaging behavior sure. and unaddressed trauma for you people bet. For, for the strong friend, right? Absolutely, right. Okay, you bet. for the for the strong friend, right? And so, like, that's now become like a really big thing for me, right? Yep. You know what I mean? Like a really, really big thing. Yeah, because I just think. Uh, a lot of us, the high performers, are, you know, need a lot more help than we sort of let on to. Well, and I don't right? think we ask for help. Yeah. Um, I think that's, you know, is there an app for that? Yeah. Um, <laughs> we were talking about that <laughs> earlier. Yeah. So, um, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. I mean, I think that, again, having time now to reflect back yeah. on, on my time in the mayor's office, you know, I had lots of great advisors on policy. But I don't think I ever trusted myself enough to ever be honest about the stuff I should have been honest about, mm -hmm. that, that, what I was struggling with. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe that would have created a different uh, narrative and a different outcome. Uh, but, you know, I think as leaders, oftentimes we're very um, reluctant to open to anybody um, and to make ourselves vulnerable. Yeah. And, and, and you know, I mean, and again, the irony on that is I made myself most, the most vulnerable in the most vulnerable way. Right. But in, in, in a way that wasn't a healthy way. Right. So, you know, how, how could I have, how could I have done, you know, how could I have worked on the stuff I needed to work on without putting myself in a situation that basically, you know, impacted me and a whole lot of the people who I loved and worked with, um, you know, and, and had a really bad outcome. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I mean, but now that's like this last nine months. I've had time and I, and I do a lot of yoga <laughs> Right, good. <laughs> because I'm due. I mean, good, absolutely. Yeah. And, and, uh, because you have to be able to get into that healthy space. I mean, you said it, um, you know, we talk about health care, not well being. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Like, well, it's two, it's totally two different. very different things. Totally two different. Two very different things. Yeah. And, and, uh, and gosh, so dangerous, man. Like, like I, uh, I, I just remember, um, you know, waking up the morning that it was announced that Anthony Bourdain took his life. Oh, God, I, rem so I remember waking up, looking at my phone, and just li literally being like, 
I'm going back to bed. You know what I mean? Like, just yeah. like, just like, just like, this sucks. Yeah. Like, this sucks. Exactly. Right? Like, this is like, here's this person who like, you know, it's just a really amazing person, right? You know what right. I mean? But like, 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 oh, you know, took so many of us around the world on to, so to, many adventures, right? To be able Absolutely. to like have 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 a broad a broader view of the yep. world, a better view of the world, right? You know what I mean? Yep. Um, and uh, and man, who, you know, he he couldn't he wasn't well. Right. Right. He wasn't right. well. Well, and Gosh. and then in that kind of couple of days then Kate Spade yeah right 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 and, and again another yeah. incredibly talented creative yes, soul yes who for whatever reason couldn't uh, yeah. you know couldn't live in this world anymore and, right. and how sad for that and her family and and, and so I you know I, I think you see that and that wellness piece is missing yeah it's it's completely completely missing and I, I just you know and, and the healthcare industry is not really concerned not really with doing anything about it right now. And, and look, I, I, I think the healthcare industry is a fantastic industry. Sure. Right? You know, I think great people um, choose to be in that industry because they care about people and they want to to help people. But we don't know how to do this at scale yet. Right. You know what I mean? Like, right. we, don't, we don't really know how to do this. And this is where I get mad about the judging and the hypocrisy stuff, you know, because it doesn't sure. help anything. Sure. It doesn't help anything. Like... But, but um, you know this, Marcus, because you spent your life as a, as a disruptor. It needs a disruption. And it needs something that takes us away from that fee-for-service model, which is uh, probably not going to happen in our lifetime. Right, Because right, you look at all the competing right. uh, factors of why it exists. Yeah, that's right. But it, it needs a disruption. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and until we get there, I, I mean, when, when Max died one of the things that I really needed was grief counseling. Mm -hmm. Well, let me tell you the amount of money that a company is willing, that a insurance company wants to pay for grief counseling, uh, compared to how much it actually costs. So that the, the gap of what you have to cover is pretty significant. Yeah. And I know I'm not alone. I mean, people lose people every, every day. day, every day. So, and, and, and it can be devastating to somebody's life. So, you know, how, how are we helping them get back on track to be better workers, mm -hmm. better parents, better civically engaged. I mean, and if we don't have that wellness piece, it just doesn't happen. What's exciting right oh now? Oh my gosh. What's um, exciting? It's a new year. What's exciting? I'm excited that it's a new year. Yeah, I bet. I bet. <laughs> uh, 2019 looks really good. Cool. Uh, 2018 is in the rear view. Yeah, that's And that's, that's a, right. a wonderful thing to, to, to see. But I'm just excited about Nashville. Yeah. Uh, we've got so many things coming on. Amazon coming in. Uh, we've got... Uh, you know, challenges like we're you know we've always had but yeah. i think we see this community here as one that steps up and tries to solve problems yeah and i'm still excited about that that's uh, awesome yeah i think uh, and, and i'm personally excited just because like i get to do some new and different things this year yeah like 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 what you talked about the fist class yeah which, that's exciting which i'm super happy that you're doing I that's too. that's that's really really great i'm excited about it too i've got speaking engagements coming down the pike okay. that uh that I'm talking to lots of different groups about lots of different things. That was one of the things that I really loved when I was in the mayor's office, being able to go out and talk to people and yep. make that connection about what was meaningful to them. Yep. Uh, so I'm going to do more of that this year. Uh, when when uh, you know people people are looking at the the level of activity that you have on social yeah. and speculating about what that means, sure. right? And, and we we've talked about it, and you basically said you know. It, it's it's you keeping it's in me, touch. Yeah, it's yeah. Me, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's me living my life. Yeah, right. Um, right. And uh, and there's no hidden agenda. It's yeah. just it just is. I mean, you know, people ask me often, hey, does this mean that you're gonna go back into politics? Right. And, and and my answer is not today. Uh, my my hope is that whatever I do in the, in the future serves uh, the community in a way that's meaningful. And I still have two hands and a heart, and I still want to serve. So. Yeah. I don't know what that means, but that's where I am today. We were talking about this neighborhood and, uh, yeah. and, and the changes that are happening in this neighborhood uh, and a lot of other neighborhoods in, yep. in Nashville. We were talking about um, businesses that, uh, you know, we, we, we grew up around right. here, yep. right? Yep. You know, in, 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 in our Nashville you know, yeah, life, sure. right? right? In our Nashville course. life that are, you know, sort of on a week by week basis going away. Yep. Um, and... You know, I liked I liked what you said about the greater story there, right? Because yeah. um, I do think there's a there's a greater story. 
let me ask about something that feels like an, irra- an irrational fear. Okay. Uh, and it feels like it, it might even be like a conversation that, you know, sometimes like uh, you hear you hear like uh, a conversation in your head and you know it's not yours, like someone put it there. Right. Did, you, you know no, what I'm, I, you yeah, know what I'm I, I totally know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, so, so this one sort of feels like that, but okay. then I can't. I can't uh, get away from the, the emotion of it. So okay. what does worry me is are the things that are going to take the place of the mm-hmm. things that were there before, right? So we, so we know that new sure. things have to happen. Um, of course. Are the things that are going to take the place of those things um, going to have a heart? Are they going to, are, are they, are they, are they going to really add from a cultural vibrancy or are they going to be transactional and um, just sort of cookie cutter? You know, sure. you know, are, are we, are we going to see sort of an increase in terms of like the percentage of businesses, uh, brick and mortar businesses, you know, an increase in those being uh, outposts for large corporations as opposed sure. to small businesses, you know, and, and I'm, I'm literally asking because I think you probably had some insight into sure. that when you were, when you were, in office, right? Right, right. Well, I, I mean, I think so. Yes, things will change. Yeah. I mean, that's just inevitable. Sure. And and yes, the brick and mortar stores that we knew are going to come and go. Uh, but I think it's actually important to ask if if Nashville wants to be a community that has the support for these local businesses. Mm-hmm. What do we need to be doing? And we talked a little bit about this uh, before we we started on on camera. The three businesses that you and I were talking about. One of them is going away because the woman is. Retiring, yep. so fine. We fine. have so that's, that's I mean, all good. well, but we have an aging population, and mm-hmm. so in Nashville, there's and so who are going to have that? So, you know, was there ever conversations about a session plan? Was yeah, there a right, way to right. to have like talked about that? Were there resources right. for that business owner to right. think through that? Right. The second one that we talked about uh, was a brick and mortar restaurant mm-hmm. uh, that we know closed their doors because they couldn't get people there of quality to work. That's and, right. and, and so that's going to be a huge issue for us. So if Na- in Nashville, what are we doing? We got a workforce issue. We got an affordable we housing issue d- directly right. connected to it. And right. we got a transit issue. And we got a transit issue. Right. Really, I've heard yeah. these things before. <laughs> um, and, then, and then the last business that we talked about was a locally owned, women owned business that is filing from bankruptcy. And, yep. and so, again, what kind of support could Nashville have provided it, through the not for profit? I'm not, when I say Nashville, I don't mean government Nashville. Yep. I mean Nashville in, in the bigger sense. You know the Entrepreneur Center, the Center for Nonprofit Management. I mean, what are what are the the places where you go to to learn how to do stuff well? Yeah. And and and, and I think those are the questions we have to ask. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's not gonna that's gonna be a familiar story. Mm-hmm. Um. And uh, but things are gonna change, and things are gonna get more enhanced. I mean, this neighborhood is gonna get a soccer stadium, which is gonna yeah, be is. pretty amazing. Yeah, it is. Uh, and that's great. Yeah. And and that's a complete departure yep. from where this neighborhood used to be. Yeah. But it's a good one. Yeah. I, I hope so. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I hope so. How come yeah. I, I think that, that I would expect nothing I'm super less. excited to walk to it. It's yeah, yeah. Be, right. It's I mean, it's awesome. Yeah. It's um, and, and, you know, with, with that in mind, too, there are conversations about the, the Speedway, too, and, yeah. and making yeah, it yeah, more yeah, enhanced, yeah. which course. was always part of the, from my perspective, it was always part of the plan. But, again, taking something that's iconically beloved in Nashville and making it better. One thousand percent. Yeah. I, look, I, I I think yes and right. And yeah, you know, I agree. about all this yeah, stuff. I'll like, I'm not I'm yeah, not like a you know this or that. I'm like I'm, I'm like I'm, I look. I am not in particular like a racing fan, but as a Nashvilleian, I want a speedway in Nashville. Sure. Right. You know, I, like because I want us to have everything. Why not? Why? I want exactly. to have everything Why for not? everyone. That's like right. that's yeah. I I want everything for everyone. Forever and ever, right? You right. know what I mean? Like, uh, so, so, like, so just let's just figure that out. It's just another great enhancement yeah. to the neighborhood. Yeah, neighbor let's let's just figure that out. Mm-hmm. Are we gonna figure out transit? Well, and, and um, there's, there's been a ton of post mortem on it, so we don't have to. Like, we really don't even have to look like look back, right? Like, I, right. I I'm literally more looking forward. Here's like what I what I keep hearing. I right. keep hearing people saying, "Okay, we want a plan, just not that plan. Bring us a plan that." Yeah, this this is where it gets murky. Bring yeah. us a plan that you know what I mean. Yeah, right. And, and, so, and, and, then, and then we'll we'll do something, right? Okay. Well, I guess that's a good start. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you know, I saw I, I read I think a piece yesterday in the Times that talked about how car companies are backing way off of driverless yeah. cars. Okay, so um, well, that's so that's not going to solve our problem. Yeah. 
And and, and surely, yes, technology is going to evolve and it's going to change. What about Lyme? Yeah, sure. And like, birds. Yeah, I know. I mean, look, I, I see them all over. You know what I see? Mm-hmm. People falling and busting their face exactly. open. Exactly. Like, not, like, I am not even kidding. No teeth. I am not even kidding. I went to the Predators game a week ago mm-hmm. with Redditch, Chris Redditch. Yeah, yeah. And on the steps, there was, like, she, she look, she had to be in her, like, her 50s or something. And ate it and I was just like oh my god like these things are they're they're not I mean super well, yeah yeah look, and look I'm into innovation all, all that I kind get of it. stuff but like people don't know how to ride these things they go 20 miles an hour right. like again I'm not, uh-huh. I'm not like I'm, look you're I'm not just, gonna catch me on one right I'm, I'm just I'm just, um, I'm just making the point and that I'm like pretty adventurous but I but but I'm also I also know my limitations <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm just making the point that I, I got on one back here uh, over you know off Houston yeah and uh, like there's no there's never any cars back right, there so sure. like it was more like a fun thing yeah and like I, I opened it up like all the way and I was like yo this thing is it can go very fast this thing I, goes, think, <laughs> I, I think <laughs> actually it, it can only go 12 or 15 miles an hour but it doesn't sure? matter I, I'm I'm not 100% sure, okay. but I will tell you that, like, it doesn't matter. At 12 or 15, when your head is hitting the pavement, like, you're, yeah, yeah it's not good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and anyway, so, like, I feel, I, feel, I feel like I'm old when I say that, but but I, I was just saying it in the context of, like, that's not a transit solution. It isn't. You know what I mean? Like, right. well, like, like, is, like we, we need something for real. And, I, and, I mean? and I, as a pedestrian who walks a lot, the fact of the matter is that those, those the, the, they're not supposed to be, but they are. They're on the sidewalk. And honestly, they come out of nowhere, and like I'm waiting to get, like I'm I'm waiting to be in a scooter accident, but not be on the scooter. Right, 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 right. Just be walking, and not just realize. Walk, just walking and having somebody like slam into me. Okay. Um, so we so, yeah, that's bashed. so that's not our. Um, no, I, that's all right. I mean, they, they have a place. They do. No, I, again, they totally do. Again, everything for everyone. I'm actually right. very happy they're here. They're just not the transit solution. Okay. Right. Fact. So. so right. They're not. I've said um, that, no. Building a double decker highway is not the transit solution. <laughs> I, haven't, I hadn't heard that one yet. But like, I don't, I don't listen to a lot of stuff. Yeah, I'm yeah. like in my head, and I'm like doing my thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, yeah. Uh, it's a really du- double decker mm-hmm. hi- highway. Mm-hmm. That's what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, it's not gonna happen. Uh, but the thing is that at the end of the day, I'm tired of how driving. Do you, I know. I'm really okay, tired so of driving. How do you, how do you move the most people in the most efficient way? Yeah. And. The transit plan had that mm-hmm. because you can move people a lot faster and more efficiently in a train, which okay. is why lots of places have them. I mean, you may have to go outside the United States. So the plane but... got beat up on the on the on the tunnel thing. And, I, I, and look, why? Hold on, hold on. <laughs> let, let me just yeah, 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 it got beat up on the tunnel. And That's okay. And look, I ha- I have to admit, I didn't. I was not someone who read the plan. You know, I was basically like everyone else has such strong opinions. Like I'm just right. gonna I'm just gonna decide to vote right. one way or the other. Right. And I voted for. I'm gonna decide to vote one way or sure. the other. And then that's it. Like I'm just not going to get into right. all the other all the other right. stuff because like it just there felt, were lots of details. It felt like such a crazy waste of energy. Like there were lots for, of details, right? And yeah. and and you're right. And but I the, think but the, the the tunnel downtown was the thing that everyone was just like, uh, you know, you know what? So, so it, it, it hasn't it, been the has tunnel anything, downtown. It would have been, been something else. Yeah, I mean, okay, okay. the thing, I, yeah, yeah. I, Got it. Because because yeah, if, yeah. because if people are going to be against something, they're going to find something to be against. And and and. You know, and, and that fine. But obviously, it needs to go back to the drawing board. It needs to to yeah. That's to, a, that's evident. And, right? and that's and that's evident. I think that you know there there. I think what people uh, forgot was that there was lots of community meetings, lots of energy, lots of time, lots of uh, stuff that was spent on this. But like forgot or ignored. Ignored because yeah. well because people are busy. Yeah. Like you know and and so. This this wasn't a plan that just came out of the air. Yeah, um, it was created with a lot of input. But at the end of the day, that's okay. What Nashville does really what? well is when we decide to not go here, we figure out another way to go here, and that's yeah. what's gonna happen. I wasn't heartbroken when it when it didn't pass. Um, you know, I wasn't heartbroken when it didn't pass. On the only thing that scared me was what did that mean for us ever. Get, getting something right. done. Well, it definitely is going to be a hard uh, road ahead. It, it, it's it's going to be a hard future yeah. for us. But right? it was always but it was always going to be hard. Yeah, yeah. And and and, and I think that you, you know, folks. Well, what you know, it's, so, it's just a hard challenge, though, right? You know what I mean? Like, is, you just start every, there. Every, you start right. there. You got we, well, and that was the whole point. That was the whole point to say, look, we have to start somewhere, mm-hmm. and we have to step up and do this. And and I I hope that I know that 
my time in office is going to be remembered for lots of different things. But I do hope that one of the things that, that uh, my administration is remembered for is this idea that we weren't afraid to say, we have a problem, let's try to fix it. Yeah. Um, and, and to do things that were bold and different. Uh, not all of them hit. Yeah. And uh, But you can't be afraid to say, I'm not going to do this, or I'm just going to leave it alone, or let, like, let, you know, let's cross our fingers and hope it works out. What, I, I, what I don't was, think so. What was the, what was the, um, uh, the, 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 pri the, the public, the, the plan thing that you think you created that where you, where you and, and, and Michael Burcham would like go to the EC and like mm -hmm. people could present plans. Oh yeah. Yeah. That was awesome. thing. yeah like, that was what great. was it called? So that was, well, that was our, uh, it was like our shark tank for yeah, budget. Yeah, for yeah, budget. yeah. 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 And I don't think they do that anymore, but I loved that. Yeah. So, so yeah. So that, that's a, that's a great example of like, what was it called? Well, well, we called it, uh, I don't remember now, but but it was public. I remember it was, it was, it was like a, a public. Plan. It was a well, we had, it was a private public private public partnership. Yeah. But what we would do is we would say, okay, we're going to give money to not for profits. Yeah. But you have to have a government partner, and then it has to be solving a problem that you guys do a pitch. I mean, it was a pitch, just like Shark Tank. Um, and oh my gosh, it was so cool because people had to come in and actually tell us what problem they were going to solve, and then how they were going to solve it. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, because that's how that's how government should work. Did you spend any time talking to the folks at uh, Harvard Business School? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so, the whole Yelp thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. That um, yeah, yeah, because like you know that's like their whole thing. Yep. It's sure like basically is. America's going to be saved by the cities. Yeah. Because this oh, oh, is such right. a disaster. Right. And, and, oh, absolutely. And, I mean, like, and we need entrepreneurship in, in government. Yep. That and, and that's what we were trying to foster. This idea of being better about resources. Yep. More thoughtful about tax dollars and actually solving problems. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, entrepreneurship in government is a is an is is such an interesting thing. I, I love I love the work that uh, that uh, Mitch uh, up up at Harvard Business yeah, School yeah. is doing around it. Um, can we talk a little bit about about the the whole Rockefeller Initiative? Um, like, sure. I, like I just feel like I'm going on like you know. Keep like, going. Like it's a, all right. Sure. Yeah. No. No. This is yeah. great. Uh, so so the Rockefeller Initiative um, about about resiliency. Yeah. Um, yeah, <laughs> you 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 went to a different place there that I wasn't expecting. Like, so, okay. I loved it. It was great for our city. Okay. Um, you know, Rockefeller chose a hundred cities. Yeah. Uh, across the across world. The world. World. Right. And, and like there were only two, I think, or maybe three at the time, two or three in the United States. Okay. Like, um, because yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I remember. I mean, that. it was a really big deal to get this, and. Uh, and this idea about how do you make your city resilient yeah. against big shocks? I mean, we know we, we know we can we can have a flood, but it wasn't just about that. It was about rises in unemployment. Mm -hmm. It was about affordable housing. I mean, all of these all things. These how things. do you create a city that's resilient to shocks? Mm -hmm. um, and really important work. Um, and uh, you know, I'm I'm sure that that the work will still find a way. But, but I, you know, one of the other things that I loved about being part of the resilient cities was that you learn from other people. I mean, I think, yeah, right. that, you know, that was the best part about being part of some of these initiatives, like with, at the Harvard, um, we, we did lots of stuff with Harvard, Bloomberg, mm -hmm. um, resilient cities. Uh, it was that other people have tried this stuff. Right. So why don't we learn right. how it worked or didn't work and right. then adapt from there. Right. Uh, and I think that's, that that's part of that entrepreneurial spirit too. Like, don't don't do something that somebody's already done that didn't that failed miserably unless you figured out why. Yeah. And then if, if you think it's gonna work, at least you've got that as as, as context. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It, it it was it was a super exciting thing to me uh, when it yeah. you know when it was announced. Um, yeah. Anyway. Um, so so maybe maybe we can like uh, you know end with uh, talking about the next generation. Okay. Of of leaders and. Um, you know what is really exciting to you sure. about them, and and I I'd love to mostly selfishly because I'm not I am not very partisan myself. Um, like I'd love to talk about it in a non yeah, yeah, yeah. In more in more of a generational framework sure. if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know I, I I love to talk about like like what's what's exciting what what worries you and, and do you sure. think, and do you think, and, and I would say in particular, what do you think we need to do, you know, Gen Xers, what, what do we need to do to like better support the, the generation of up and coming leaders? You, sure. you know, um, this is something I'm, uh, I, I'm 
certainly thinking about because of you know my my own boys, but sure. but but I think just just generally speaking, uh, you know, I'm seeing more and more young people really you know getting right. ready to to step up to the plate. I just think about myself, you know, what yeah. I mean? when I first stepped up, and, and you know, youth was a was a gift, and it also yeah. you know what I mean. I also oh. didn't know anything, and I didn't have any, any mentors, and you, you know what I mean. Like yes. I didn't have any of that. So so like. Well, and you just hit the nail on the head yeah. about where I think we owe those up and coming future leaders. And that is one of the things that we did create in the mayor's office when I was there was called Opportunity Now. And okay. Now that is going to go down as the thing I'm, I am I love the most that too. you did. Me too. Period. And and, and That's that going to be my favorite thing that you did. was uh, incredible yes. because it was all about trying to take kids 18 to 14 to 24 Putting him into paid, meaningful internships. Touched my family's life. Oh, I'm so glad. So, so I and and we had ten thousand jobs that first summer. So, I it mean, awesome. I know we we touched a lot of families. It lives. was awesome. And and you know it and and I, I, you maybe heard me tell this, but the reason it started for me was was really personal. I Max was a junior in college. Mm -hmm. And he called me up and he said, I need an internship this summer. Mm -hmm. And he said, do you think Dave, my friend Dave, would hire me? And I said, well, I don't know. You know, I'll call Dave. And Max called me back and said, I talked to Dave. And Dave said, sure, he'd hire me. He said, but I don't want to go work for him if the only reason he's going to hire me is because I'm your son. Mm. And I said, the only reason he's going to hire you is because you're my son. Because you're totally not qualified. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. So, but that I took that to heart and thought... How do I open the door yeah. for everybody else's kid? Yeah. Because they, don't, they can't pick up That's the phone and call day. Totally. Dave. And so, totally. like, how can I inspire? And, and by the way, I was just the one who said, let's do this. All of the businesses and companies and not-for-profits in Nashville stepped up to it. Do was it was such a Nashville and, thing. And, and it yeah, was, you know, it, I mean, so I just said, let's do this. But I, we never could have done it unless... Everybody like came no, together. It, it to was do great, it. and it was great. it was great. And I think the kids and, and and it had to be paid. Yeah, because one of the things was to try to teach our the biggest gift we can be giving our kids is the idea of how do you do financially how financially plan how do you get a paycheck how do you it showed me what I had not yet done for my job like yep. like when I took him to the intake yep. you know at the at the Midtown yep. Police Precinct yep. and like they were like okay Kieran you know go to this place right. and fill this out and here's your tax forms. And I was like, right. holy cow, like... And you need to know how to navigate he, that. Of course you do. Right. Of course you do, right? And like, now, he's done it. Like, exactly. check. Right. He's he knows got, how to do it. He's got that body of experience, right? right? He's had a boss. Yep. He's had coworkers. Yep. He's had, like, he's... He had to get up for work every day. He had to, he had to work, work show somewhere. Up, right. Right. He had to, like have a nice demeanor <laughs> and, and all that stuff. And yeah. you know, the fact that you, you had a, ver like they weren't all like camp counselor jobs. I mean, no, you, know, no. in, you know, in this case, he, he had his first, you know, he goes to, he goes to, to school and he learns programming sure. and that's great. But his first programming project, I remember he came home, you know, and, and, uh, and you know, I, I used to be a programmer, right? right so right. So he came home and he, like, he, you know, he, He's basically showing me the project he's got to work on. And I'm like, you don't know how to do this, do you? And he was like, no. And I was like, okay, let me let me just draw this out for you. Boom, boom. He was like, oh. And then he went on to do it and right. he built and his very first web application. That is so like, cool. But Right. I and mean, then that was the other thing. We tried to create it was internships incredible. across every every kind of business, every kind of opportunity. Yeah. These kids are, 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 are interested They're diverse. Yeah. They're diverse. They're, they're yeah, in all exactly. different types of things. Yeah, right? exactly. you know, there's the hospitality industry. Yep. There's, there's, but it wasn't anyway. just about like going to McDonald's. Right. I mean, that was part of which, 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 which is was fine. fine. And that might be what my kid does and, this and summer. And you know what? And, that and was that's one, good too. And that was a good job too. But we had all kinds of different jobs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, yeah. now. That was one of the things that I think that that we did uh, with the team that was really, really incredible. How do we better, um, I, I completely agree with you, how do we better scale these types of things, right? So so like, I, I would not call myself lucky because I've worked very hard, except that it was lucky that I came to Nashville because I, I could have picked anywhere to sure. be. And we, you know, we just, you know, my ex-wife and I just, decided we were going to be here because she went to high school here and had a right. best friend here. And I didn't knew nothing about the city. Right. You know, couldn't have picked a better place to sure, land. Absolutely. Right? But that, that was probably the, you know, other than being born into the family I was born into, that was probably the luckiest thing yep, that, that, that has happened to me in my life. Right. I, you know, I, I like just ending up here. I couldn't agree right? more. Yeah. Okay. 
after that, I worked my ass off, right? You know what Me I mean? Too. After that, I, I get worked. It. <laughs> I worked, I worked, I worked, right? right? But um, there were some things that were game changers for me, right? Okay. Um, and getting into the slipstream of leadership programs yep. that's happened here, right? Right. Leadership Nashville right. being a, a big one. Right. Is kind of a game changer, but it is. That's a, that's a right. small number for it the is. number of leaders we actually like. We can only handle this number in that one program, right. and it really kind of only starts at a certain age. Yeah, right? yeah. You know, and, and look, I know there's national emerging leaders in the in the, in the junior chamber. Right. Like I know there's, there's lots of different right, things, are, right? Sure. But like, how do we grow more of that? Yeah. How how do we get this at the scale that you really need? Right to be able to do what well, needs to be done. I mean, I think we're, we're doing something. We are, and I, but I think you're right. I mean, you've got recognition of folks who are maybe already leaders in their field, you know, forty under forty and that kind of stuff. But how do you find those ones who are your emerging leaders? Right, and and I think you know it's funny because this comes up all the time, especially in politics with uh, with women organizations like. Well, there's only this one, and so we only need one. Yeah. It's like, no, no. We can oh have 12 you can emerging never leaders. Have, you can never have enough. You can um, never have so, enough. So, uh, you know, the challenge is that you've got to find somebody who, who wants to take it on and, and build it. Uh, but I think that we we need to be more deliberative about how we do that. We got, we got to figure that we out. Do. We, got we to do. Fi- we got to figure that we out. Do. Okay. Do. Any, any, um, any final thoughts you want to leave me and... Sure. Viewers um, slash listeners. This sure. is this is gonna get uh, burned down to an audio podcast too. So don't worry. So yeah. so so I will just tell you that um, uh, the other thing that over the last nine months I've become more deliberate about is what I put on in the morning. So like huh. like I everything on my wrist huh. means something to me, and huh. and and I don't have any tattoos, so I, I don't. I'm not looking at something that's permanent yeah. on my skin, but I. I find some real strength in that, hmm. and I'll just I'll just leave your folks with this la- this thought this the little necklace I have on today, which says that a lion doesn't turn around when a small dog barks, and I think that it's healthy for all of us to yeah. remember there are lots of small dogs in our lives. Yeah. So you can't get distracted by the small dogs. Yeah. Uh, and so wh- whatever oh, that I... means for you, yeah. but it's like. There are a thousand ways that those small dogs can can derail your day. Yeah. But if you're a lion, you just don't turn around. That's so awesome. I'll leave you with that. That's thought. awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. All right. You you are a superhero. Uh, seriously, well, for a lot of people. You're like, awesome. No, for a lot of people, seriously, like you know, um, you are uh, you're definitely a sign of strength and hope for Thanks, a ton of people. Um, you know. For a variety of reasons, and you know, thanks for t- making time hey, for this no, and doing this. And, uh, yeah, and, 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 and like uh, you know, just just uh, being open to to uh, to developing friendship too. You know, yeah, I, I just like me yeah, too. that yeah. that actually means a lot to me. So, Same here. Uh, all right, so I, thank you very much, thanks. and uh, yeah, this was a good one. Uh, we'll see you next time. Peace. Thanks. <laughs>